Hey everyone, it's Mark. This is my recap for Pokemon Journeys episode 108, Lucario and Greninja, the Aura of Destiny. This was the 1193rd episode of the Pokemon anime, and it featured the long-awaited return of Ash's Greninja. There is plenty to talk about this week, so let's break it all down. The episode starts off with everyone at the Cerise Lab watching this advertisement hyping up Ash and Raihan's battle. Leon was a part of it, although he basically just said, yeah, it'll be a cool battle. Thanks, Leon. Everyone is fired up about Ash's upcoming battle, including all of his Pokemon, as we cut to a scene of all of them training together. Go and Chloe come and bring them some food so they can have a snack break, but Lucario is too fired up to eat and just starts sparring with Cinderace instead. Ash recognizes how Lucario still wants to get even stronger, and seeing this is motivated Ghost Froakie and Chloe's Eevee to start battling. This battle battle doesn't last very long because Go's Froakie evolves pretty quickly into a Frogadier, and Go is pretty excited about this, but it looks like Ash's head is in a different place entirely. Evidently, seeing a Froakie evolve into a Frogadier must have clicked with Ash and Lucario's desire to get stronger, because all of a sudden, Ash wants to take Lucario to visit Greninja. They immediately jump on the next flight to Kalos, and along the way, Ash and Go talk about why Greninja is so special to Ash. While this is going on, we see a quick scene over in Hammerlock, where Raihan is meeting up with some excited fans. He heads inside his gym to do some training, and we get some flashbacks to one of Raihan's losses against Leon. He was so angry and disappointed about losing that he punched a wall, and he decided to take a picture to remember how he felt in that moment. This right here was the reason why Raihan started taking so many selfies, which is a pretty funny backstory, but alright. Anyways, they get started training as we cut back to Ash and Go, who are looking for Greninja in a forest. Their search is unsuccessful, so they decide to call it a night. Inside the tent, Go is asking about Greninja some more, and Ash talks about his relationship with Greninja, flashbacks included. Now, most of these flashbacks were exactly what you'd expect, until we get to the scenes where Greninja should be in its Ash Greninja form. I am so confused as to why they didn't include Ash Greninja when they reanimated these scenes, like they intentionally changed it so that Greninja was just in its normal form. Very strange that they would do this, but I don't really have any further comments on it than that. I honestly don't think it's a big deal at all, it's just a strange detail. They call it a night and go to sleep, but Ash and Lucario get woken up when they both sense something nearby. Ash is convinced it's Greninja, so they head out to look for it. Lucario leads the way and runs into some of those evil vines from the giant rock. Lucario's aura sphere is powerless against it, and just as Lucario is about to get struck from the vines, Greninja appears to save the day. Greninja immediately gets to work battling the vines, and eventually Ash and Go arrive in the middle of the melee. Ash recognizes his old friend, and my interpretation of what happens next is that we see Lucario's perspective of what's going on, with Ash and Greninja each giving off a very strong aura. Ash wastes no time and commands Greninja in battle, and Ash immediately falls back into sync with Greninja, and together they are able to sense the weak point of the vines. They send a water shuriken at that weak spot, destroying the vines. Go is awed by what he just saw, however, Lucario is looking irritated for some reason. Ash is ready to start training, and so they challenge Greninja to a battle as the sun rises. The stage is set for this battle, and even though Ash is battling against Greninja, he can still sense its movements. Lucario, on the other hand, not so much. In all honesty, this battle is super one-sided. Lucario can't even touch Greninja, which is partly due to Greninja's incredible speed, but really, it's more down to Lucario being so fired up and aggressive that it's totally out of sync with Ash. At one point, we even see Lucario strike out on its own without Ash telling it to, but all it's able to muster is a soft punch that Greninja easily sidesteps. Lucario's aura flares up and Ash thinks it wants to mega evolve, but before they can really even attempt to do so, Lucario just strikes out again, which of course Greninja dodges. Lucario is pretty embarrassed at this point, so it just runs away. Ash tries to chase after it, but Greninja stops it, and Ash decides to let Greninja handle this on its own. Greninja finds Lucario by this stream, but Lucario wants nothing to do with Greninja. Eventually, they let their guards down, and Greninja beckons Lucario into the water. This scene is pretty important, but there are no words, so it's a little hard to explain. What I'll say is is focus on the ripples, or waves, in the water. While this is happening, we see Ash and Go chilling on this log, with Ash explaining how Greninja and Lucario are really similar. He says he can feel it inside him, and now we go back to the lesson in the water. Greninja is methodically creating more and more ripples, and Lucario is able to sense how this is like aura waves. Eventually, it understands and is able to create similar ripples on its own. In the video I made previewing this episode, I talked about how aura is called wave guiding in the original Japanese version, and I speculated how Lucario's aura was really similar to the way the bond phenomenon works. That's kind of 
of how I saw this scene, with Greninja teaching Lucario the importance of maintaining wave guidance in order to be totally synchronized with their trainer, and in this moment, both Pokemon are able to sense Ash, and that includes being able to sense the giant root that is coming up from behind him. They both spring into action to go save Ash, which is good, because Ash and Go were not really able to stand up to these vines at all, and they note how these ones are bigger and stronger than the last ones. Lucario and Greninja return to save the day, ready to team up. This battle scene was really cool, and we even see how Ash and Lucario are more in sync than ever. These vines are putting up quite the fight though, so Ash decides it's time to mega evolve. Now they really mean business, and after this power up they're able to actually do some damage against the giant rock's roots. Ash decides that it's time to finish things up, and we get this epic scene of Ash calling for Aura Sphere almost like it's the Bond phenomenon. And speaking of which, Greninja is lighting up a water shuriken alongside them, clearly all three of them are in sync in this moment. Ash still wants more power though, and we see Lucario build up this crazy ginormous Aura Sphere alongside Greninja's massive Water Shuriken. They ready their attacks and launch them together, completely eviscerating this bunch of vines. Lucario had a lot taken out of it from that battle, but Ash is proud of it, and Lucario is happy that he and his trainer have gotten stronger. Cut to later that day, and Ash says his goodbyes to Greninja. Greninja leaves in a flash, but Ash reiterates that he'll always be connected to Greninja, and he can say the same thing for him and Lucario. The episode ends with Ash and Lucario having grown even stronger together, and we see that Raihan has been pretty busy training as well. He takes a selfie to capture the moment, and now it's time for these two to clash for the final spot in the Masters 8. Well, I thought this was a great episode, and I have plenty more to say about it. First of all, I thought this episode totally delivered on what it set out to do, and that was to hype up Ash's battle against Raihan. We found it from the dialogue at the beginning that this is the final promotion match before the end of season tournament. So yeah, that's basically what I've been saying this whole time. Ash will make it into the Masters 8, and then the competition will immediately go into the final tournament, because of course, that's how the timing would work out. One thing that went totally against what I have previously said was how Ash got the idea to go re night with Greninja. I have made fun of the people who said things like, oh, Ash will remember Greninja, or seeing a Froki or a Frogadier should remind Ash of Greninja and make him want to go visit him. I thought that kind of talk was ridiculous, but here I am eating crow because that's exactly what happened at the start of this episode. I still don't think it's the strongest reason ever for a Greninja return, but then again, this wasn't the entire story. The main point of this episode was that Ash wanted Lucario to get even stronger, and he thought by having Lucario meet Greninja, they could get stronger. Of course, Ash was right, even if this probably didn't go exactly as he had planned. Ash said that Lucario would learn something by battling with Greninja, and it sure did. After getting embarrassed by Greninja at first, Lucario was eventually able to learn the importance of staying totally synchronized with its trainer, something that Greninja was able to teach it thanks to the similar way that the bond phenomenon and wave guiding, I mean aura, interact. It's pretty clear that Ash and Lucario are now even more synchronized than they ever have been, and that comes just in time for this big match against Raihan. This really is a big match, they even decided to replace Marnie and Piers with Raihan in the opening animation, I wonder how long that will last. Seeing Raihan's perspective in this episode was also a welcome addition, it shows just how serious both trainers are taking this upcoming battle. I'll give my predictions for their battle after I talk about the preview for the next episode, but for now, let's talk some more about Greninja. Coming into this episode, I had relatively few expectations. I I thought Greninja's return would be for the benefit of Lucario, and that's exactly what it turned out to be. I didn't come in expecting to see Ash Greninja get activated once again, and I definitely did not expect Greninja to rejoin Ash's team in any way, shape, or form. I guess the only thing that surprised me really was that even though the roots of the giant rock showed up, there was never actually any dialogue about them this entire episode. We got no backstory as to why Greninja was fighting against them, and no update on how much longer it would potentially take to clear them all out. I mean, that's fine, I guess. I didn't expect Greninja to have finished protecting Kalos from the vines, so I didn't mind at all that it is still hard at work. I like how Ash pointed out how Greninja had probably gotten stronger since he had last seen it, and I think that was proven correct. The battle these two had made Lucario seem pretty weak, but I think the rest of the episode did a good job showing how Lucario built its way back up to being on a similar level to Ash's Greninja. Sure, Lucario is nowhere near as fast as Greninja is, but that's fine. We saw Lucario's Aura Sphere do way more damage than Greninja's Water Shuriken at the end of the episode, and we 
have seen just how resilient Lucario can be in important battles. So all in all, I would say that Mega Lucario is probably pretty close to the same level of strength as Greninja is. And since this episode did such a good job of building up Ash and Lucario's bond, as well as hyping up Ash vs. Raihan, I'm giving this episode an 8 out of 10 rating. I don't think this was one of the best episodes in Journeys or anything like that, but I thought it executed exactly what it set out to do, using a returning character to help the development of a current character. Hey, that sounds kind of familiar. Moving on to the preview for the next episode, and it was just showing a lot of the same clips we have already seen of Ash and Raihan's upcoming battle. I'll make a video about it later this week going more in depth on how I think this battle will play out, but for now I'm just going to say that I am 100% confident that Ash will win. Let me know what you think down in the comments. That's all I've got to say about Greninja's return. I only have positive things to say about it. Of course, I haven't read how anyone else is feeling about it just yet, but with it being Greninja we're talking about here, I am sure it has caused some strong feelings one way or another. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time.